Here we have three different examples of the iron oxide mineral hematite. Um, hematite can look very different, especially when you're in the field. So I've tried to get a couple pieces here that demonstrate maybe some different colors, some different lusters, some different surface textures, just to give um, some good examples here. So the first thing when I look at hematite, lots of times I see either a metallic luster, an earthy luster, but usually I see some kind of dark gray, silvery, or dark reddish looking rock. And so we've got three different kinds here that show a little bit of variation in color. Now hematite can get really, really red where it almost just looks like a red clay mineral. Um, but these are gonna be really common for what you could find in the field. And I've got a two really nice samples down here as well. So this sample here, has um, definitely, we see that there are smaller crystals. We don't see a lot of big crystal faces coming out at us, but I want you to notice that there's a couple different things going on here. We've got this, these super small, this would be like specular hematite, we would say. So we have these really small, shiny silver crystal faces. And then right next to it, we have this kind of dark reddish, brownish blob. All of this is hematite here, um, but some of them just grew in nice crystal faces and others were a more massive form. Um, but this is a pretty typical sample that you could find if you were out in the field. And to note as well, when iron oxidizes, it turns that really dusty red color and we can see evidence of that here as well. So the luster, if it's oxidized and has weathered surfaces, is going to be earthy and red. And then if it's fresh um, and has a good crystal face to it, it's going to be this more silvery color here. And um, here's another sample. This one is going to be a really nice well-formed sample. This is where the luster turns straight metallic. This is a beautiful metallic luster. There's no um, there's no oxidation to this where we have that iron red tinge to it. We can see that this is a crystal face. It has those step forms to it, the little platforms and striations as well. Um, this is a really beautiful piece here. And the colors vary a little bit as well. This is going to be really silvery. This is a little bit darker. And then this one here is um, a good example that shows both the silvery plate faces as well as that orange, reddish, earthy um, luster that's coming through too. So other than luster and um, how these are formed, one of the most diagnostic properties of hematite is its streak. If I were to streak all three of these samples, the streaks would be identical. So no matter how shiny, how red, how dark the sample is, it's always going to have this red-brown streak to it. I'm only going to streak the kind of uglier sample. <laughs> we'll keep these nicer. But so we have this really diagnostic red streak. And this came from this silver mineral, right? If I were to streak all of these, even this really shiny mirror-like surface, it would still have this red oxidation because it's, it's an iron oxide mineral. Really nice. Another thing to note is the crystal habit of hematite. It can vary widely, but when we have these kinds of bladed forms here where we're radial pattern growth from a center, that's pretty indicative of hematite. This is a really nice sample. Um, but having this massive form of specular hematite, then we have this one, which would just be, I mean, this is a great sample. But we also have earthier samples that would be like, um, oolitic hematite and those have um, little spheres that are in them that don't reflect as much light. So um, in general, the crystal habit is widely varying for sure. Um, so we've done luster, we streaked it. The hardness of this is pretty moderate hardness because there's a lot of iron in here. It is a little bit higher, so it's about a five, uh, 6.5. So we could take a test and see if we can scratch off um, something on one of these surfaces here. Let's go in with my um, steel nail. So I definitely made a little bit of a mark, but this is going to be highly variable on what the crystal face is, how well it's formed, the crystal habit. I'm not going to um, streak this one, but this would be a lot harder than this massive form here. So the hardness can vary a lot, and that's why there's a 1.5 
difference from 5 to 6.5 on the hardness scale. Another thing to note if you have this in your hand is that this is a really dense mineral. It has a high density. It's a bunch of iron. It's like holding a chunk of iron in your hand. It's really, really dense. Um, more dense than something like the um, cuprite that we saw earlier, the copper oxide. This one's really dense. So we've done luster, streak, hardness, density. The cleavage of this one, there isn't any cleavage, so that's not going to be something that we use as a diagnostic property. Um, you can see here that we have a couple different examples of fracture, but even the fracture looks irregular, not really indicative of anything. Um, the color of it, we covered, we covered that. The crystal system is trigonal, which is a subset of hexagonal, but finding those beautiful hexagonal examples like we saw with um, corundum is just not going to be something that you see with hematite. And lastly, the crystal form of habit, we discussed that as well. We've got a massive form, really nice crystal faces here, and then this kind of radial pattern. But hematite can grow in many different ways. So um, the most important things are the streak, the luster, um, and the density as well. And that's hematite, our first iron oxide.